Welcome into Sports Memos Betting Podcast. College football, every game on the board, section number three with Joe Ranieri. Joe, welcome into the pod. How are you? I'm excited, man. Gobble, gobble, damn it. Happy Thanksgiving to uh, to everyone watching. I hope it's uh, not only a profitable uh, Thanksgiving, but also one that doesn't torture you too much with the family. Yeah, hopefully not. Yeah. And uh, Joe, it's a great sports betting weekend, man. Mm-hmm. We got a lot to choose from and a lot of college football starting off here. The Saturday card, man, it's a great one on rivalry weekend here, starting off in the Peach State. Three, four, three, three, four, four. And guys, if you're following along at home on the odd screen, we're going three, four, three, all the way to three, seven, eight on the Saturday college football card. We got the number four ranked Georgia Bulldogs at Georgia Tech here. We got 28 being the number. That's Georgia laying in Bobby Dodd. Total of 46 here. It is a Georgia Tech home game. However, uh, there will be a lot of Georgia fans there, Joe. You interested in uh, laying four touchdowns against the uh hapless Georgia Tech team that is off of a win it is it's off of a win and I give them credit and I love uh, I love the way this program is heading and uh, you know out with the uh, Paul Johnson era in with the Jeff Collins era I think it's going to be great there but you know Georgia's got style points to think about here this week and while this game in this series by the way um, has generally played to the under I don't forget Georgia had they haven't played well against bad teams this year you know they they just haven't been able to get over that hump but right now they hold that number four spot unless something changes here so they know they've got to win they've got to win convincingly too because you don't want to leave it up to the committee so to me uh the yellow jackets offense revolves around being able to run the ball and yeah no that's not going to happen here with georgia and i know it's a lot of points but Going to be a lot of points in this game. I think Georgia puts their uh, foot on the gas here and does uh, everything in their possible. Probably like 38 to 7, something along those lines. 38 7 is what you're seeing in uh, Georgia, Georgia Tech. So uh, they would just cover in terms yes. of if, if that does happen. Okay. That's at best. I mean, that's at best. I mean, they'll probably hit the 40 mark, but I do think that uh, what you say the number was 46. <laughs> uh to 28 28 <laughs> no no what was the total 40 oh, oh 46 and a half or yeah, 46 I that, you're right yeah, i don't think that number is too low too as well so yeah i i don't see how they score points but I, even if they can throw a touchdown in i think that'll be enough to get the cover as well all right all right joe we got uh connecticut at temple up next oh, and in the aac geez. here 49 being the total temple minus 28 against the huskies that's it. A couple of you starting right off with a couple of four touchdown favorites here. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> That's what uh, we're doing here. Yeah. Well, the favorite is four and one against the number in the last five meetings between these teams. Um, the Huskies, they're two and 11 against the number in their last 13 meetings as well between Temple here. I do think Temple's a little bent out of shape. Um, and while they're not UCF and Navy, I, I do think that. Uh, they'll be able to score enough points and cover this game here. This is another. It's got blowout written all over it, man. Lay the four touchdowns. They're winning. Joe, Tulsa versus ECU staying in the AAC here, seeing five in the hook. That's the Golden Hurricane laying on the road. 61 the total. Joe, I lost on Tulsa last week, man. I'm thinking about going back to the well. I don't know, man. Talk me I, on or talk me off here. I, I don't know why they're favored in this game. I really i am trying to figure it out. They uh, They have a worse record. Um, they're on the road. Maybe it has something to do with the, that UCF game a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, to me, East Carolina has played a very similar schedule in, uh, in that ride. I think they nearly upset Cincinnati a few weeks ago. I think they have momentum coming off a win here. The pirates do, uh, to me, this is ECU. I, I just, I don't get it. And, uh, if I'm going to get five, five and a half points, the home team is four and one against the spread in the last five meetings. Underdog is five and two in this. Um, yeah, go ahead. Give me East Carolina. I'll take the points. All right, Joe, we got Boston college at Pitt up next 51 and a half being the total Pitt is at home laying nine or nine and a half, depending on where you're shopping. All right. So, um, uh, this is how terrible this was. I had both uh, Boston College getting, you know, 400 points last week. And, uh, yeah, Pitt. I uh, expected Pitt to show up against Vatek. Uh, neither of those things happened. So now I get to uh, bet against both of them. I don't know how to do that yet. I'm trying to figure it out. But right now, I would say, given the state of Pittsburgh 
and what I witnessed there last week from these two teams. The one thing I know about Boston College, they're going to be able to run. They're going to keep running. They're going to have some success regardless. They're going to chew up clock. I think nine points is way too much. Um, Anything more than a touchdown, I think, is too much. The value to me lies in Boston College in this one, so I will take the dog here. All right, Joe. Next game up, we got uh, Vanderbilt and Tennessee. Looks like 45 and a half being the total Tennessee. The Volunteers laying 22 in Knoxville. They're playing some of their best football of the season right now, Tennessee. Can we talk about a turnaround here, guys? I think they're also Vanderbilt has owned their ass over the last uh, over the last four or five years. And I do think that. Uh, This might be the year we get a little revenge as uh, Tennessee is on the rise. Vanderbilt is on the decline. And, yeah, I could see Tennessee running away with this one, kind of making a statement, getting even for losing uh, the last three years. So give me Tennessee. Lay the points. Like in Tennessee, minus the 22 at home. We got Wake Forest at Syracuse in the ACC up next, Joe. Looks like Wake laying four on the highway, 67 the total. Yeah, uh, this is going to be another one of those games where I think there's going to be a whole lot of points, not a whole lot of defense in this game. Um, I do like the over. I do like Wake Forest as well. Um, you got a Syracuse defense, guys, that allows at least 30 points a game here. They're not going to stop anybody. Wake Forest is really good on offense. They've got it. Uh, they've got it cooking here. They don't play a whole lot of defense either. So take your pick: Wake Forest or the over, or maybe a combination of both there for you for you in a park. We got Texas State at Coastal Carolina in the Sun Belt here. We're seeing the Chanticleers laying seven at home, 53 the total here, Joe. It's interesting. They got a pretty good record against the number in the last four when they are going against uh, teams or losing record. They're four and one in their last five conference games. And um, they're also, well, they're also pretty good. They gain a whole lot of yards, don't they? That's what we can count on with this team. Uh, I do think that they've got more than enough to be able to get this game covered against Texas State. Texas State and the quarterback Vitt there, I do like the kid, except he has a hard time figuring out which team is his, and he often at some point throws it to the other team mistakenly. So, yeah, no, I'll go with the Chanticleers uh, in this one to get the job done. 31-20, somewhere around that, Ryan. They will cover. Joe, heading to the Big 12, we got Iowa State at Kansas State. We're seeing the Cyclones laying five in the Little Apple, 46 and a half being the total. Both schools looking for, I believe, their eighth win of the season. And then they'll wait, of course, for the bowl seating and all of that good stuff. They'll have to watch Oklahoma and Baylor battle it out uh, out for the uh, Big 12 there title. Um, I'm going to take the points. I'm going to side with the home team here. They beat the Sooners on their own home turf a couple of weeks ago. We all know this. Um, While I think this is going to be a lot of fun this game, um, yeah, I'm thinking Kansas State's going to cover here and win outright. He's Joe Ranieri, and he's hitting 58% in college football year-to-date, also 70% in the NFL year-to-date. Those aren't cherry-picking numbers. Those are straight from the start. 70% in the NFL, 58% in college football, also 63% across all sports the last 30 days. So uh, if you're looking for a hot handicapper, he is your guy. Fire! So, uh, he's, he's a humble guy himself, but I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you out there. Not, man. I don't even tell people. I'm like, you don't want to know. Um, the 12-3, and three, by the way, is the under in Kansas State's last 15 home games. You may want to take a look at that under as well. All right, looking towards the under in that game. And, guys, yeah, the numbers are uh, pretty ridiculous. 70% in the NFL, 58% in college football. You can get the rest of his NFL and college football season, the combo package throughout the national championship, throughout the Super Bowl, all the props, all the plays he releases in both sports. Only for 299 bucks using the coupon code Joe299 at checkout. 160 bucks off the retail price at Sports Memo. Dot com that that coupon code is Joe J O E one nine nine at checkout check it out at sportsmemo.com we got North Carolina at NC State up next Joe looks like UNC laying eight on the road fifty four and a half being the total Joe. Love this kid, Sam Howell, for North Carolina, freshman QB, 32 TDs, just six interceptions. The Tar Heels, 
They're good. They're bad. They're good. They're bad. They're good to bad. I love the way this program is heading. I love Mac Brown being back at it. Um, I do think the Tar Heels, the numbers that I have, they've covered the number 19 of the last 27. Um, They've been really, really good here. North Carolina State is just abysmal, guys. They've failed to cover uh, each of its last five in the ACC. I think North Carolina, I think they run away with this one somewhere around 38 to 20, somewhere in that ballpark. Joe, this next one I like a lot. 361, 362, oh. right from your neck of the woods oh. here, talking FIU at Marshall. Of course, FIU beating the big brother Miami just last week in Marlins Park. Actually, a fun game to watch. 49 yep. being the total in this one. We're seeing seven and a half Marshall laying at home. Joe, I, I got to tell you off the bat, this has letdown written all over it. FIU already punched their ticket to, to, uh, to go bowling. They just beat Miami. They've been partying all week. Um, they're going up to West Virginia, a bunch of South Florida kids where it's cold. This has blowout written all over it. I don't know. What do you think? I, it's so hard right now because watching that game against Miami and, and watching Butch Davis and company and what they're doing here at FIU guys, uh, they got, they, they got some sort of mojo working, man. They're getting bounces. They're getting everything going their way and they're playing solid football. It started off a little shaky. Uh, yeah. Butch Davis is notorious for teams getting better as the year progresses. Um, and they really are. They're humming. And the thing that scares me about the herd is that they they haven't covered well at home. Six of the last seven at home, they have failed to cover. Seven of the last ten on the field turf there. Um, uh, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. FIU, man, gets the win, gets the cover. 31-28. They do it on a last-second field goal or some trickery crap that Butch Davis is going to pull out. They're going to get the job done and win outright. Wow. All right. Like an FIU to, yeah. to uh, go to two in a row here against uh, kind of the big boys. All right, That's Joe. It. Differing opinion on what that one. What good is beating Miami if you're going to sit there and fall to Marshall? What the hell good is it? You got to keep it rolling. Uh, this is college football, though, Joe. I yeah, think I know. Right. Yeah. Dude, FIU has been up and down. They get blown out by Tulane by, what, 40 points, and then they it's- beat Miami? I don't get it. Yeah, exactly. They got something rolling down there right now, though. A lot of excitement here with that FIU. And meanwhile, Miami, they're on. It's not good. They're a mess. Man. Manny yeah. Diaz, isn't he the first coach to lose, uh, what's the stat, lose by as 14-point favorites three separate times in one season? Said it was a, quote, dark time for the program. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no kidding, man. No kidding. And that's coming from a team that's out, you know, with a whole bunch of prostitutes on boats paying players. <laughs> but this is a dark time. So that tells you how bad it's got to be you. Joe, you're there in Miami. How do how, does Miami ever get back to to o one o two or no? Are, are those that's water under the bridge? No, that, that it's not going to happen anytime soon. And it's just it's too much. The playing field is grown. You know what I mean? Now, Clemson is what Miami used to be, uh, and it, they just they're not going to get it unless they can get the quarterback position. They're always going to have the athletes. But they need to get that quarterback, that stud freshman that, you know, comes in, lights up the world like a Trevor Lawrence, somewhere along those lines that he can get people talking and they can build it from there. But until they get that QB, it's not going to happen. Yeah. 363-364, Navy at Houston. We got Navy laying eight on the road. I believe Navy's still alive to make the AAC Mm -hmm. championship game. 58 being the total in Houston, Joe. Yeah, uh, over... Oh, I can't even believe I'm saying this. But but over uh, the Cougars giving up uh, 32 points a game. They've allowed at least 460 yards on average a game. Um, listen, they're playing decent. And, and given all of the uh, all of the ridiculousness surrounding this Houston program, I got to give them credit, man. I mean they they can they can go toe to toe with uh, with people. Their rushing defense is not bad, but. You know, you're going up against Navy, the triple option. You never really can prepare for it. I do think they can score some points in here. I do like Navy to win. I do like them to cover, but I also like the over a lot. I'm thinking, you know, 38-24, somewhere in that ballpark. I like it, Joe. Big 12 action, Baylor at Kansas. We're seeing the Bears laying 14 and Lawrence, 52 and a half being the total. This Baylor team's enough to drive you crazy, too. Uh, you know, I almost want to take them, and I almost want to take the under in the first half because they never play in the first half, Baylor. They are so friggin' frustrating, it's not even funny. They're obviously the better team here. They're guaranteed a spot in the uh, Big 12 championship, taking on Oklahoma. You want to talk about an opportunity, a look-ahead spot. Damn, does it get any more look-ahead than this? Like, can we beat Kansas? You better beat Kansas here. Um, they could... 
if they don't focus on them, get their asses whooped by 30 plus points here, less miles and company. So this, I don't think is, um, I, I love Matt rule. I love what he's got going on. He's too good a coach to allow these guys to sleep on Kansas. They will get the job done. I think they blow them out to like 48, 17, somewhere along those lines. Joe, we got three good rivalry games in a row. Ohio State at Michigan to start here. We got the Buckeyes laying eight and a half or nine in the big house. Looks like 50 and a half being the total here, Joe. So Michigan at the big house getting nine points. Um, Yes, please. I'll take that any day. I know it's been rough for Harbaugh and company, um, but the underdog, uh, Michigan in this series, it's um, they haven't done a bad job of covering. They just can't win. In fact, I think they've covered the underdog uh, in this series uh, at least five of the last six. Um, I, I got to tell you, man, I love the way ever since that second half of Penn State, the way Michigan has been playing, I'm telling you, they're one of the best teams in the country. Something clicked in that second half comeback. They fell just short against Penn State, but something they got it rolling right now. Offense is humming. We know they got the athletes. They got a whole bunch of guys just like Ohio State that are going to be playing on Sundays on both sides of the ball. Uh, I'll take the nine points, man. I like the home dog to cover here. And you better sprinkle a little something on that money line because Harbaugh, he's getting the job done at Ohio State chaos will ensue on the next uh, meeting of uh, whatever the hell those group of people is smoking butts, eating Antamin's coffee cake and everything else, trying to figure out who the best four teams in the country are. Put us in that meeting. I'll yeah, tell you who really. the best four teams are. Exactly. Ah, I used great. to follow it, Joe. Now I'm, I don't. I couldn't even tell you who's on the uh, committee anymore. But... I root for chaos. Total chaos, man. Give me Alabama to blow it. Oh, give, me, give me total chaos. Ohio State loses. Give me everything. Give me all chaos. Do you think the Pac-12 makes it? No. God, no. No. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to. I mean, and I feel terrible because there's this feeling that somehow with Oregon losing, Utah now loses like some sort of credibility, which I think is ridiculous. Utah is definitely one of the top five or six teams in this country. I just don't know what the way it shakes out that they're going to have an opportunity to represent. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving back to the games here, Joe. We got Clemson at South Carolina, 51 being the total. South Carolina's already knocked off uh, one team in contention for the playoffs. Can they make it two, Joe? Clemson laying 27 at South Carolina. Absolutely not. You've got to be kidding me. This is a terrible Gamecocks team. They've lost four of their last five. The, The one win was Vanderbilt, of all places. So Clemson is not here to mess around. Dabo's got these guys. They're not and a not great competition. We know that. But they are. it's the way they're winning and the way they're beating. Their, they're not even leaving anything for the imagination here. It's not even remotely close. Expect them to just destroy them. Probably score somewhere in the 50s here. They'll be in the teens. Uh, this is going to get ugly here against South Carolina. Joe, let's move to the battle of Paul Bunyan's mm. axe here. That's what we're going after in this matchup. This is a yep. good one. Wisconsin at Minnesota looks like 47 and a half with the Badgers laying two, two and a half on the highway. Neither one of these teams obviously can afford to look ahead. Uh, So they both, uh, you know, these are two teams. I think they're going to spend a lot of time going. What if, um, you know, only if uh, kind of situation there. I think uh, both had slip ups that they wish they didn't, but they find themselves in a spot here. Plenty motivated uh, in order to be able to get the, uh, what is it, the Paul Bunyan axe, I think. Is that what the, uh, somebody's getting that axe, right? Uh, The rivalry here. Jonathan Taylor, to me, is the guy that is going to be the difference maker in this game. I think he can. I think he's going to set up. um, I think he's going to set up a Wisconsin-Ohio State battle here, guys. I do think Wisconsin gets the job done. I think it'll be low scoring. But I love Jim Leonard. I love what he's done with that defense. Give me Wisconsin to upend uh, P.J. Fleck and company. Great season for Minnesota, but let the big boys play now. It's uh, it's Wisconsin's time. All right, Joe. And yes, Paul Bunyan's axe. What about uh, throwing chaos into this? If Minnesota runs the table here, Joe, they would have beat Wisconsin. Yeah. They would have beaten Ohio State in the championship game. Do you think Wisconsin – or excuse me, do you think Minnesota – actually controls their own destiny to win the national championship. Uh, that's, a, that's a big ass. To go through Minnesota and then have to go to Ohio State is just, that's a big, 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 big ask over there. If they would do it, you're right. Chaos. How do you keep Minnesota out? 
Uh, regardless of the loss there, how do you keep them out of the uh, out of the playoffs? But you don't. I think I think a Big Ten champion, whoever it is, is going. I, I really do. I don't know that they're going to leave too much money associated with the Big Ten in order to uh, thumb their nose about it. Yeah, My, money talks, and uh, that conference has a lot. Gotta of sell it, tickets, so. guys. Gotta sell tickets. <laughs> Exactly. Rutgers yep. at Penn State. Talk about oh uh, big spreads here. This one, uh, only, something only a gambler can love here, Joe. 49 being the total with 41 mm. being the spread. That's Penn State laying at home. Well, listen, don't mess with Rutgers uh, covered. All right. They, uh, you know, good. Listen, great. Good teams win. Great teams covered. And Rutgers covered a game. Finally, uh, they were only getting like 85 points against Ohio State, but managed to do it. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this. Uh Penn State wins, Rutgers covers. Has that? Let's let's go that route. Penn State will win. Rutgers. Penn State's also only two and four at home against the number here. You would think they'd be a little bit better against it. I think the Scarlet Knights. Uh, they're zero and three uh, against the number on the road. But heck, why not? I mean, the Nittany Lions are six and five against the number on the year. It's not like they're these big numbers for these big schools here. I think Penn State. It's a little bit of exhale. They will win, but I think Rutgers will do just enough to keep this thing close. He's Joe Ranieri. We've got a couple games left. Guys, he's hitting 58% in college football year to date, 70% in the NFL. Yes, you heard that correct. 70%. That's not cherry picking. That is year to date. Check him out at sportsmemo.com, a mainstay on the college football every game on the board podcast. 63% the last 30 days. Check out the rest of his football season. That includes college football. And the NFL, every play he releases throughout the Super Bowl, throughout the national championship game, you'll get it all. Use the coupon code Joe299 at checkout, J-O-E-299 at checkout for his NFL and college football all access through the title games for just 299 bucks. Huge savings there at sportsmemo.com, coupon code Joe. 299 new mexico state at liberty up next joe liberty the flames 14 at home 65 the total in the uh second time they will be playing this year yeah i you know i love liberty man i really do strong passing game down the field new program really starting to uh, come along they've got uh, uh quarterback josh edwards antonio ganny golden they've got a wide out a couple of uh, they got a wide receiver there with a 1300 1400 yards this season nine touchdowns um the good thing about Liberty is that you'll notice their running game opens up and makes that passing game even that much more lethal, especially deep middle of the road. Those 20 yard to deeper passes. They do a great job. They really do. And we're talking about New Mexico State here, right? We are talking about. New, yeah. Um, so that's the case. I'm going to take the Liberty Flames. Give me the flames to flame it up here. I'm expecting somewhere around 44 to 17, 44 to 20, somewhere in that ballpark. Joe, New, yeah, we're talking New Mexico. Would it have changed if we were talking about the New Mexico Lobos? You're damn straight. I would have. I would have enjoyed that a little bit more there. Although I do think, uh, I think there's going to be a coaching change there soon. <laughs> yeah, Bob Davy might have seen his last uh, games there as an FBS head coach. Oh no, it was one great. More they, left. they mutually agreed to part ways at the end of the season. How nice is that? Oh, it's official. I didn't. Oh, see it's that. official. Yeah. Now, this morning they came out and said that to Bob Davy and company. They have uh, agreed to mutually part ways. Oh, okay. Well, good Good for them. At least they're uh, keeping it amicable. Yeah, he's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like, Bye. Joe, we got uh, one game left here in the... <laughs> ...on this holiday weekend. Uh, Col- no, no, we, we got you, Joe. Colorado at okay. Utah, 49 being the total. Looks like the Utes, 28 and a half in Salt Lake City. God, they play no defense, Colorado. I mean, zero defense, like none. There's defense, and then there's what Colorado plays, which is absolutely zero defense here. Colorado have won what? Um, I mean, they've won two in a row, if I'm not mistaken, in this matchup here. I I just don't see how Utah lets up. I will say this. The under is 4-0 in the last four meetings in Utah between these two teams. It is a huge spread. But I got to tell you, man, the Utes, they're hang- they know what's at stake here. And as, uh, as fun as Colorado has been at times this year, I can't trust that defense. I love that front seven of Utah, one of the best in the country. Going to be really hard. It's going to be a long, long day for Colorado. I'm thinking 45-13 somewhere in that ballpark. Utah rolls. 
I like it, Joe. Great podcast, as always, guys. 58% in college football, 70% in the NFL from the start of the season. Get the rest of his NFL and college football season using the coupon code JOE299 at checkout. You'll get it for under 300 bucks. Every play releases throughout the Super Bowl, throughout the national championship. Check it out, sportsmemo.com, coupon code JOE299 at checkout. Joe, anything else you want to throw out here before we shut this down? Very safe and uh, happy Thanksgiving. Make it a profitable week in college football, guys, and we'll do it again next week. All right, Joe. Have fun, man. Have a fun, safe holiday, and uh, best of luck with your bets, man. You as well.